Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanna share with you a really cool trick with backface culling that, in my opinion, produces a much more realistic, much more natural lighting for your scene. And I think this works especially well with these isometric diorama style rooms that are really popular and a lot of fun to make. So first, I'll show you the difference between using this backface culling trick and not using it. This is what this scene looks like without any backface culling. This is done in cycles. And now I don't think there's anything wrong with this image. I think it looks fine, but watch what happens when I turn on backface culling. And here it is again without, and then with it back on. And I think this room just looks so much warmer and cozier and more inviting. To me, the lighting just looks better. So let's hop back into Blender and I'll explain what backface culling actually is and then I'll show you how to set it up for yourself and it's really simple. It only takes a couple minutes. All right, so by default, Blender is set up to show every face as two-sided and what that means is that if I bring in a plane, you can see that this plane has a side to it. You can see the gray texture on it. And if I rotate this around to the back side, this side also has a texture on it. It's two-sided. Now, what backface culling does is it says that every face is one-sided, which means that, yes, I can see this side right here, but if I flip it over to the back side, it's gonna be transparent or invisible. We can see through it. And the reason that that helps us is that if we create a shell around our entire scene, instead of light coming in through these windows, hitting the floor and then bouncing off into open blender space, never to be seen again, it will come in through the windows, hit the floor, hit the wall, and then bounce back into the scene, redistributing that light into our scene. And you can see from my scene here that if we look at it from this angle, we actually have a ceiling and a wall here and the same from this side. So setting this up is really easy and it only takes a couple minutes, so let's do that now. All right, so there are basically three steps to creating this backface culling trick. And the first step is to create the actual shell for your scene. And the way that you do that is you bring in a cube and then you model it to be the same size and shape as your actual scene. Now, the next thing is that you want to select the faces that you wanna be able to see through. So I've got all my faces selected. Then I come up here to mesh, come down to normals and hit flip. Now yours will not be see-through at this point because there are still some settings that you have to enable. And actually each one of these viewport shaders has their own different settings. So solid mode has its own setting, look dev and rendered all have their own different settings that you have to enable. So first let's do this solid mode. If I come into solid mode, and then click this drop down box, there's actually a back face culling option that I have to select. And when you select that, then you should be able to, in this mode, be able to see through the walls that you have flipped. All right, next let's go into look dev or material preview, which is this third one here. You're gonna see a whole lot of black faces on this one. So let's come down into material right here. And then if we scroll down into settings, there is an option for back face culling. And when you click that, now you should be able to see through all those faces that you flipped in look dev mode. Are you genuinely finding this video helpful? If so, please let me know by hitting the like button. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do that for me. All right, and then the last viewport shading option is of course rendered mode. And this is the one that we all want, right? Right now I'm in cycles. If you want this for Eevee, then your work is already done. If you did the look dev or material preview, it's the exact same thing. We just come into materials and make sure that back face culling is turned on. But for cycles, we actually have to create a material. So I'm going to come up here into the shader editor. And if you want, you can split screen, but I'm just going to keep it full screen. Now that we're in the shader editor, we're going to add three different nodes, this geometry node, this mix shader node, and this transparent BSDF node. Now this principled BSDF node is in here by default and it loads up automatically whenever you create a new material. So we need to add geometry, mix shader, and transparent BSDF. And the way that we do that is we can hit shift and A and either search it in this menu by typing geometry, or we can hit shift and A, come into input, and geometry is in the input section. To add mix shader, it's shift A, Come into shader and select mix shader. For transparent BSDF, we can come down to shader again and transparent BSDF. 
And now that we have all the nodes out in our editor, we need to link them up. So the back facing output is gonna come into the factor of the mix shader. Then we have the output of the BSDF and the principled BSDF coming into the first shader spot of the mix shader. And then in the transparent BSDF, the output of that one is gonna go into the second shader of the mix shader. Then we're gonna tie it all together with the shader output of the mix shader coming into the surface of the material output. Now, when I was first doing this, I would always mix these up and I couldn't ever remember which order these went in. And honestly, I don't think it really matters too much because you can always just flip your faces again in a different way, but I like to get it right the first try, right? So the way that I came up to remember all this is to think of it in alphabetical order. So we have geometry is G, right? So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, like that. And so in alphabetical order, it just comes right down the line on this mix shader. So that way, now I never forget which order it goes in. And now that everything is hooked up, you should have everything that you need in order to try this trick out for yourself. But one last bit of advice before we go, and that is sometimes you have to be a little creative with adding extra walls to block out light, but you still need to be able to see through them like they're not there. And so, for example, you may have to add a wall in over here or up here just to keep certain light out, but you still need to be able to see through it. So keep that in mind as you're blocking out light for your scene. And another thing is that light does not work the same in a back face culling room as it does without. And that's obviously because it's bouncing around inside the room. So one scene that I did, the lighting, I had to lower it a lot because it was just blasting. It was amplifying the light from bouncing around. In this scene, and I think it's because of these open windows here, I've really had to boost the amount of light. You can see over here in my settings, I've got the strength up to 45 on my sunlight. And if we come over to Photoshop, I can show you the difference. Here was the original scene with no back face culling. The sun was set to eight on this one. And then when I had the exact same settings but added the back face culling, it looked like this. And I could tell that I liked what it was doing. It just wasn't bright enough. So I then boosted it to 15 and it still wasn't bright enough. So I just kept coming down the line, boosting it by five until I finally landed on 45. And so just keep that in mind as you're experimenting with the lighting in your scene that you may have to lower it or brighten it in order to get the lighting that you want. All right, I hope that helps guys. I'm gonna leave my latest video for you right here if you wanna check that out. Otherwise, I have an entire tutorial playlist for you right over here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time.